Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to find the depth map using AI with a single camera with Midas. So you can see here on my left, I have the webcam and you can see there's two images. On the left image is the webcam feed and on the right image is the depth map that Midas computes. So we'll jump right into it. So I have the repo here in my GitHub, Kevin Wood Robot. Go ahead and check it out. It's going to be inside this function called main.py. It's going to be the code that I'll be going over today. And if you're new to my repo, I have different things on ROS, OpenCV, Git, Mechanical Design, SolidWorks, C++, and Python. And all of them has the corresponding playlist on my channel. So go check it out. So here is the PyTorch website that describes how to use Midas inside your code. So this, great, um, this is a great way to uh, run your code without having to download the Midas repo. But if you check out the Midas repo, you could see that there's a lot of different models that Midas offers. One of the main things to consider is your performance. So it's measured by frames per second here. You can see the bottom axis and right here for the Y axis is the improvement. So typically, depending on your system, you want to choose what's best for you, especially if you're dealing with real-time performance. You may be leaning towards the ones with a higher FPS. But if you don't really care too much, you can see that um, if you're okay with a slower performance, but you want better results, then you could go with some of the larger, newer models, like the 3.1s. You can see here the BEITL, so you could consider those. Okay, so inside my README, I put the references that I used and as well as my setup, so I'm using Windows 10, Python 3.10.9, and my VS Code is 1.84.0. And some special notes is make sure you don't name your file Midas.py, you're going to get errors. I renamed the path to this because they renamed their GitHub uh, for the load command, but if you use the old one, it should be able to figure it out, but if not, just use this. You also need to do pip install tim because uh, the torch image models are located there. And then if you want to use CUDA, you want to install torch using uh, this command here that comes with CUDA with some of the um, additional arguments that you append to the pip install command, okay? So here is my main function. So what I did here is I created a class to define my three model types. I have the large, the hybrid, and the small. And then I have my main class here, which first off, I want to initialize my, this is my constructor. So by default, um, I'm gonna just use some model the large one. And then the first thing is you want to load the model. So when you load the model, you're going to have, you're going to store the model into your cache. Um, but if it's the first time, then you're going to, it's going to take longer to go. And then after that, it'll be pretty fast. So I'm going to save my model type here for later. And then I have my use CUDA here. So for my use CUDA, um, what this does is it's going to see if CUDA is available. If it's available, it's going to use CUDA. If not, it's going to rely on the CPU. Okay, and then from there, it's gonna do the setup for that. The next step is the transform. So for the transform, uh, what this does is gonna transform to the shape so that the model can uh, take in the parameters. So if it's a large or hybrid, you're gonna use a DPT transform. Otherwise, if it's a small version, we'll use a small transform. So that's just a transform setup. And then the main part, which does the prediction uh, using the model, what we want to do is convert our color to BGR to RGB. And then we're going to do a transform for the image. And then we're going to do our prediction here. So we're going to call self.midas, put in the input batch, and then we're going to do some interpolation. So inside the interpolation, we're going to unsqueeze the image, do some bicubic uh, interpolation. And then after that, you unsqueeze it. I mean, you unsqueeze and then you finally you squeeze it back and then you do some calculation on the CPU. Then you're gonna normalize, and then we're gonna apply uh, a color map so that we get the nice orange and purple using this color map Inferno, okay? So this will take in the image of your current frame and then return the depth map in the Inferno mode, okay? And then here is our main uh, loop that's running. It's called live predict. So inside live predict, we're gonna start up our camera object called capture object. And then we're gonna just run a uh, forever while loop while true. And then we're gonna read in the frame, pass in the frame to get the depth map. We're gonna combine the frame and the depth map so it's gonna be side by side. And then we're gonna show the image and 
put some uh, escape Q key if we want to quit the program. Okay, so these are the sequence of steps that I just described, and we're gonna uh, create the Midas object and then run these steps and then see our live prediction using the webcam. Okay, so let's go ahead and see this run. It's gonna take a minute. Okay, so you can see the webcam feed and the depth map is showing left and right, uh, respectively. So you can see as I move my hand towards the webcam, you can see the color is more yellow, which means that it's a lot closer. And as my other hand is in the back, you can see a kind of gradient uh, from close to far away, right? And I have an object here, you could kind of see uh, the object moving in space. You can see the color uh, is changing as it goes in the background, it becomes purple, okay? So this is with the small model, and then we'll check out how the large model looks right now. So we're just gonna comment out the first one and uncomment the second one and then run the program. So this right here is with the large model. You can see an obvious delay that you can see my mouth is moving a lot more slowly. And as my hand moves up, you can see there's a drastic delay. But if you look at the color gradient, it seems like there's a lot more gradient going from close to far away. You can see my hand that's close is a very bright yellow and my hand is, that's in the back is a, a nice light purple. So you can see that uh, this probably does a much better depth estimation, but of course, uh, for the trade-off of speed. So here, here again is the object test that I did earlier. And as I move it to the back, you can see um, this one is actually better because my hand is actually not too far away, whereas previously it was very dark purple. Um, but here is like a lighter orange, which actually makes more sense. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.